Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a killer holiday weekend. No pun intended. Um, welcome back to Lou Reviews. You guys, we have a fun show today. A lot of interesting things. I was like, hey, it might be a slow show on Monday. And then some things popped off. And uh, so, yeah, we're going to talk about it. Um, so today, we'll be discussing getting paid <laughs> to debate UAP Mike. Ugh. I was like, honestly, the first number thrown at me, I was like, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> That's about my number right there. That's about right. But we'll talk about it. We'll get into the number. We'll get <laughs> into some stuff. Um, I think it's funny uh, uh, to even call this a debate is anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll discuss Jaime Musan and a new David Graves discussion that popped out on video uh, that we'll talk about. And do not call Stephen Greer a muggle because he is not. He's got some interesting stories about what's inside these UFOs. And uh, we also are going to go over a perspective not often listened to or heard very much when it comes to the aerial school sighting. So I wanted to cover that. And then also we're going to say, we're going to cover something that Mike Flynn said for former prisoner general, Mike Flynn, uh, even for him, this is pretty strange. Uh, so we'll talk about that. And then of course, UFO Twitter week goes out with a big SAR farty. Let's see what I did there. Don't let anyone tell you that this show is not brilliant. And if you haven't already, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. That way you're notified anytime we go live on our off days, which is basically every day, but Monday and Friday, 3 to 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and if you really, 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 really love this show, check out our Patreon link in the description below. Uh, that goes a very, very, very long way into making sure that the show continues to be as well produced as it is. So those jokes, they don't write themselves, folks. All right. <laughs> so let's switch over to our Lou Reviews cam here and turn my levels up. So that way when we play video. Oh, also, yeah, we're going to try and sneak this in. <clears throat> Brandon Fugel uh, Go. On the uh, has a new trailer for season, is it four or five of Skinwalker Ranch? I think it's four. I think it's four. But we'll get into that in a second. I figure, you know what, let's... Uh, it's, more to, it's more funny to kind of end with this as a moment of zen kind of thing. Oh, UFO intros donated to 499 through Super Chat. Thank you so damn much, which reminds me. Hello to everyone in the chat. Lou, would you have agreed to the debate if I had not offered money? No. <laughs> no. No. And don't worry, we'll get into it. I think I completely understand why that offer was made. I will be completely transparent with how this whole thing went down. And honestly, I, I, my whole, if you want to sum it up, it's like, and I think it's even how I responded and I'm paraphrasing here with like, if that's how you want to spend your money, <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, you know, like it's, it's your money. Um, but yeah, I mean, you'd be a fool to turn down a rate that good. So we'll talk about it again. We'll talk about it. Um, but thank you for the donation, <laughs> uh, which by the way, guys, UFO interest will be hosting this. So be there tomorrow on our space on his spaces. Uh, if you want to hear this discussion, I believe it starts at one o'clock Pacific standard. Um, okay. So we won't, we'll end with a uh, UFO Twitter week. Let's start. I suppose Actually, let's start and end with UFO Twitter week. I wanted to cover this because this was something that we kind of ended with last week when estimate of the situation come on and was, and was like, hey, 
you know, you should enter more of these discussions. Your voice could be used in there. And I've heard estimate of the situation sort of push back on these crazy, crazy ideologies and conspiracy theories um, in spaces before. But I think this is the first time it might be recorded. And it just so happens to be against Jack Sarfati. And this is the perfect example as to why I don't join spaces like this anymore. I'll listen in occasionally anonymously because, again, I don't even like the idea of it because usually when I pop into these things, it's, oh, Lou Reviews is here. Let's get him up and get his thoughts. And I'm just like, most of the times I'm just there to listen because I'm genuinely curious what this community says in the weeds, you know, <laughs> in the mosh pit. Um, I'm always curious to see where the pulse of this community is at. And it's always fringe and conspiracy and cult-like behavior. And you'll see it here. This is a tank of piranhas, but piranhas is a metaphor for believers. And you'll see how Estimate pushes back on some of the wild shit that's said by Jack Sarfati and by Richard uh, Doty. Which is like, Estimate is trying to make the point here that it's like, why are we even having Doty in this room? Why is he even here? He's so full of shit on everything that he's ever said and drove a person to a point where they were committed to a mental institution. That is fact. You can't sugarcoat that. You can't take it back. There is no backseas on that one. There is no my bad. You were your task and your job was to was to confuse an American citizen so badly that they thought for sure aliens were visiting Earth. And you just he was already kind of there and you Spartan kicked him right into that that rabbit hole, that deep pit, to a point where his family had to commit him. This was a successful business owner, if I'm not mistaken, a veteran, a really, really smart individual. Again, really smart people fall for cults all the time. And I think there is, there is part of the belief system where I know for sure believers watch this show like Kimball and they're like, yeah, fuck, that makes sense. They agree with almost everything I'm saying. <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not saying Kimball is, I'm just using this as an example. They always, and I did this myself. It's like, fuck, that makes sense. But am I really going to go back on all of this knowledge that I have? Like there's at some point, those facts are going to tip your belief the other way. And it's only a matter of time. I I, I don't know. I, I think it's clear that there are people that no matter what you put in front of them, they are going to double down, triple down, quadruple down on their belief and their cult and their safety net. They're never going to look at the logical thing and say, shit, <laughs> maybe it's just something this simple. Maybe it's something simple, but at the same time complex and also technologically advanced, but be all made by human. So... <clears throat> This is, you know, we were having this conversation in the last show, and then I heard this clip literally minutes after I ended the show. I was like, damn it, wish I'd had this clip because I would have loved to talk to Estimate about it. So let's listen to this clip. There's four people that. And see kind of how he gets ganged upon here in this conversation. All right, here we go. Which has a comic book uh about uh, that very topic of the ufo topic yeah. so uh 
pretty good narrative there. But estimate, I know you got to limit it on time. You want to jump up and ask a question? What's up, dude? Yeah, thanks, man. <laughs> I, I got to go real quick. So, like, I'll ask uh, uh, Jack a question. So, I yeah. heard that, um, you know, you pretty much vouch for Doty. And, uh, yes. My, yeah, my question basically is, I mean, so, Doty has said a lot of things which have been proven. You can verify that they're not true. And one of the things is his involvement in Project Serpo, which also involves. Yeah, I don't uh, know about that. I don't know well, about that. Well, I know. I okay. That, that that's that's great. But like you know, he <laughs> was involved in that and introducing that into the UFO lore along with Kit Green. Well, not yeah, I, I know say, along that. with Kit Green. Yeah, I know Kit. Yeah. Okay, I think right. I know what but you're they, saying. They, but they were all involved in email chain talking about Project Serpo before it actually yeah. came out. Yes, I remember. And, I was part of that chain. And the IP I was traced to Doty, which he still denies to this day. So he is lying to this day. So I'm wondering, right. well, okay. where does the, you know what? the faith in someone Yo, like Yo, awkward moment. Dodie's in I, here. I, I didn't have the, let me respond. I understand what you're saying. You said perfectly what you said. I know all about that other guy, Benowitz, and all that thing. Okay. Dodie, as an intelligence officer, they have to, that's part of their job is lying. Right? And, and, I, and I have no problem with it. If he's lied in the past, he's lied. But about Cardinal 3, I know he's not lying because I'm not depending on what he told, told me. Uh -huh. I have independent corroboration from two separate sources saying oh, exactly is that right? the same thing. Who? Who, Jack Sarfati? You're such a big, bad, bold, brash dude. Like, and you'll see. Like, he already starts cutting him off before he finishes the question. And, you know, host is, uh, the host, one of the hosts chimed in there, you know, with awkward. <laughs> like, no, it's not awkward. This shouldn't be awkward anymore. These are just facts. And so here's also the thing that you got to listen to Jack. He was part of that email chain. So right there, Jack affirms, yeah, that email chain had Doty on it. So this whole thing that he's lying it's just like, okay, so he's lying about something as simple as an email chain, but we're believing him on Serpo and, you know, alien, the, the 17 races of aliens that he talks about and the guy that he put into a fucking mental institution. We should not be treating this dickhead with kit gloves and we should not be platforming his bullshit on almost every single one of these spaces. He doesn't even have to ask to come up. People are like, oh my God, Dodie's here. Invite him up. It's like, dude, it's so gross. Thing, the details about the weight of the thing, you know, how much it weighed and how big it is and what's inside, it's empty inside and it's, you know, everything he says. So that I know is true from a guy who was in control of one of these things for four years. Okay. So that's how I know. So whatever Dodie's. This will basically be the debate tomorrow. This is it right here in a fucking nutshell. <laughs> right here. Lou Reviews also said his debate can be painted cheeseburgers. Man, if that's what you're coming to this with. Oh, man. I'd like to go four hours. You know, that'd be a bad enough of you for the rest of my life and also uh yeah a few shekels in the pocket um but if this is all you're coming with i mean shit dude it's gonna be a long long day for you but then again you'll think you're just the bee's knees so i don't know anyway we'll talk about it soon what he's done in the past i don't give a shit because that was his job I mean, they all lie. <laughs> That's counterintelligence, all that stuff they're doing. So maybe but then what do you say to the fact that he's lying today, now? Well, yo, he's let's... Lying. He's, I'm but, lying about before... what? Shut up, host. Shut up, Astral. Stop. Be quiet. He's speaking truth here. And this is this is why I don't enter these conversations. Because they mean, oh, 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 don't want to insult the guy that had something to do with somebody killing themselves <laughs> don't want to insult the guy that has manipulated and conned United States citizens don't want to insult the guy who makes a shit ton of money off of UFOs and appearing on television as some sort of fucking authority on Santa Claus 
before what? we go on, we we've got Rick is actually yeah, up okay. here, so it's like one of those moments where like he's, he's right behind right. you, bro. Right, right. <laughs> Rick, uh -oh. if you want to jump in and uh, feel free, he's right behind you. No, <laughs> that's not how this works. <laughs> Uh, this is not a three-dimensional space. There's no front, behind, top, middle, bottom. Like, that, that's not how this works. He's in the space. He's in there. He's speaking with you guys. Apparently, Jack Sarfati, with all the brilliance in the world, so fucking smart, does not know how Twitter works or how a space works. Like, this is a guy who's a physicist. You're telling me you haven't done any fucking Zoom discussions, Jack Sarfati? You don't understand how a, 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 a an internet chat room works? Fucking egomaniac. He's blocked me, by the way, which is hilarious. Feel free. Let, let me just make yeah, it yeah. clear. I don't care if Rick lied in the past and it's part of his official job, because that's the job. Okay, but about this thing, which is, I, and I don't give a shit about these. They're not important. I don't care if he made Benowitz go crazy or not. By the way, I heard him talk Why? about Benowitz. His side of the story is totally different. So yeah, you know, we have a lot of guys who you know, who lie about about Rick Doty lying. That's the other thing. Yeah, you know, we don't know who, you know what, what the truth really is. But the point yes, is, we this, do. it makes no yes, difference we do. to me because <laughs> I'm only interested. Yes, in one we do. Thing that uh, it, it does matter, Jack Sarfati. It does matter. It does matter. Just because he gets one right out of the 15 lies that he tells doesn't make it valid. It's so, it's so wild coming from this just really smart guy. Art and Paranormal, thank you for being here and being a kick-ass mod. I appreciate it. Um... Thing that Rick Doty has said, which I know to be true, and that's the thing about the Cardinal Three, and that is absolutely true. I know absolutely that with, you know, true, almost one hundred percent certainty. I I know that with almost a hundred percent certainty. So is that ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety seven? Do I how how far down do I have to go? What percentage, Jack Sarfati? Listen to what he just says here. This is the kind of bullshit that just infuriates me. And I know it infuriates Estimate, but just listen to what starts happening to Estimate the second he starts pushing back. But this is nuts. So, yeah, you know, we have a lot of guys who, you know, who lie about, about Rick Doty lying. That's the other thing. You know, we don't know who, you know, what the truth really is. But the point is this. It makes no difference to me. Because I'm only interested in one thing that Rick Doty has said, which I know to be true, and that's the thing about the Cardinal Three. And that is absolutely true. I know that. That is absolutely true. With, you know, almost 100% certainty. I know that with almost, you know, 100% 100, 100 certainty. That's the kind of shit that this goonbag says. <laughs> you know, and that's what he'll be full of tomorrow. <laughs> And honestly, I don't think I took below market rate. I think I took way above market to talk to you. Um, <laughs> woo, man. I love that you're here watching, though. Thanks, pal. <laughs> um, let's listen to the rest of this. Okay, so that's all that matters to me in terms of my job. Does that answer the question? Yeah, no, thank yeah. you. That answers yeah. everything. It yeah, sure does. Yeah. It sure does. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let me jump in. First of all, I want to say hi, Jack. I think yeah, hi, Rick. Jack is right on with right everything on. there is to do. With everything he just did. Um, there's a lot of people within the government, scientists, that look up to Jack. They respect <laughs> everything he... Uh, this is the shit that Doty does, too. There's a lot of people in the government, scientists, that respect Jack. All of his colleagues think he's a fucking maniac an entertaining maniac because he is he does no math <laughs> he does no physics but that don't make him right and all of his colleagues think he is a a dick number one because he's so egotistical and some of the pictures that are floating around jack sarfati some of the videos that are floating around <laughs> Cringe, creep city, man. Creep city, creep city. 
<laughs> ay, ay, ay. Oh, no. You see? Told you I was blocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's so funny. Yeah, we were about here and, and talk about uh, a. Uh, I teach online math. People within the government science. That answers yeah. everything. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There we go. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let me jump in. First of all, I want to say hi, Jack. I think. Yeah. Hi, Rick. Jack is right on with everything there is to do with physics. Um, there's a lot of people within the government, scientists that look up to Jack. They respect everything he uh, he says and everything he writes. Uh, I'm just a, uh, a uh, I teach online math, but nothing comparable to what Jack knows. Uh, I'm gonna actually ask Jack to come on my uh, classroom uh, someday and, and talk about theory of probability as something that I teach. But J Jack's right on and I, I respect every single thing Jack says. Every single thing. Everything that he sends out. Um, he was the first one to talk in details about Cardinal, the Cardinal craft that was <laughs> that we uh, He was the first to. one to talk about it. There were, therefore, Ricky Ticky could just waddle his little ass in there and be like, yeah, I was there for it. Oh, I know all the details. All of those things you said I can verify are true. Yeah, I'll even add a couple of bullshit things on top of those to, for a little icing so that I can really sell it to you. Yeah, I'm Ricky Ticky. What a fucking creepster. Uh, Both of these guys. Can you imagine? Holy shit, dude. I was just picturing this. Picturing Ricky Ticky and Jack Sarfati like in a hot tub or coming up to you in a club. And be like, hey, ladies, I'm Ricky Ticky. This is Jack Sarfati, one of the most well known physicists in the world. Yeah, yeah, he's got a bag of Coke. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Colombian. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's his hotel room key from the Holiday Inn Express. Oh, baby, you ladies in? Like, whew. These guys, man, these guys, they're hilarious. Now let's test training range some years ago. He knew more. He knew a lot about it. Uh, and, and obviously it didn't all come from me. It came from obviously. somebody, you know, a source of information that he's provided. Uh, and uh, no, he so, has. Uh, Who is it? You know, I respect everything Jack said. Now, getting back to uh, the uh, Serple story, obviously that person who's talking has absolutely no idea what he's talking about. He's <laughs> hearing information from somebody else, or maybe third or fourth hand. Those emails Those are traced emails, to your IP. Like, they <laughs> are not. They cannot be. <laughs> he just said he agrees with everything Jack Sarfati says, right? This is where you missed it, estimate. You just said, right? We could all agree. We all just heard that, right, Mr. Ricky Ticky? Okay. Jack Sarfati just said before you praised him and said you agree with every single thing he said that he was on that email chain. You goonie. What? What fucking planet are we living on? Jay, he just... He just like, yeah, agree with everything he said, including that email chain that he was talking about. Yep, I was on it. But let me tell you something. That information that you got that said I was on that email chain, how dare you? I was never on that email chain. It did not go back to my IP address. Yes, it did. Yes, it did, Ricky Ticky. Rick Doty. Dick Doty. Richard Doty. The guy has so many fucking names. Creepy little lizard. That's my favorite. Shit. These are your fucking heroes. These are the people that you're begging and making memes of to come join you in spaces. These guys? Fuck, dude. Infuriating. <laughs> uh, no, hold on, give me, give me, give me a response that. estimate and then we'll yeah, go. Let him talk. That's absolutely 
He has more than it. He's already responded. SMN hasn't had a chance to fucking to put a word in. False. And that was proven. There's four people that could pro prove that. Listen to this. We presented four this. People. You should have been at the 2009 UFO convention. Yeah, you should have been at that convention fucking 15 years ago, man. Four people. Four people. What four fucking people? Who who were they? Give us a link to this fucking presentation that proved that you had nothing to do with this. The guy who used to sit on UFO conventions on behalf of the Air Force. And Wendell Stevens brought up two experts. And Wendell we Stevens the, the, had brought up two experts. Wendell Stevens? <laughs> Awesome. Green on a, on a uh, PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> oh, it was on a PowerPoint presentation. Therefore, case closed, right? Case closed. Can't bring up any of the facts from what these guys found. Just, it was on a PowerPoint in 2009. You're misinformed estimate of the situation. Of where those things were coming from. <laughs> Now, don't sit there and you're listening to somebody who's feeding you lies. So I, I've never had anything to do with Serpo. I don't necessarily You were in an email chain is. talking with and, Kate Green, okay, about Serpo when it was coming out. So what are you saying? You didn't have anything to do with it. No, I didn't create it. I didn't create <laughs> That's not the question. You slippery little lizard. You just said you had uh, nothing to do with it. You were clearly involved because you were in an email. To all right, hey, this, this is a digression. Coming this out. is a digression. It's not a digression. The point is the man's a fucking liar. And that's what you're not bringing and putting on the table, Sarfarty. This is a digression. That's a, by, by the way, there's nothing about... You're lying, 100% liar. Okay, all right. Thank okay, you. Okay, okay. True. Hold on, Esme. Let, let uh, Jack go yeah. ahead, man. Jump the, in here. That Serpo thing could have happened. Whether it, that, whether the particular story about it is true, I have no idea. But the Serpo thing could happen. Prevent. You know, I mean, the Serpo thing is part of a. It was a close encounter at the end of close encounters of the third kind. It's Serpo, right? They send those the astronauts into the into the UFO. Sending American astronauts that have trained for years. Most astronauts have families. You know how long it takes to be trained to just go into space and spend a significant amount of time up there, not just like a space flight, you know, not like a Virgin Atlantic, you know, just barely getting into space kind of thing. And those aren't even like commercially available yet on a, on a mass scale. <laughs> So, ah, oh, so silly, so silly, and 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 Spielberg is getting that information basically from his from the intent from the CIA. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's where Spiel, you know, Spielberg. No, he's not. It's the culmination of brilliant writing, brilliant writing, and fantastic direction, with sprinkles, sprinkles of truth. <laughs> sprinkles you know like real programs or real people like uh characters based off of jacques valet that's real that french character in the film is based off of jacques valet which i think is the thing that honestly gives him way too much street cred way too much <laughs> like uh yeah Way too much. Way, 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 way too much. Um, interesting. Yeah. Gilbert's very closely involved with, with, with the intelligence community. Yeah, and coincidentally, the bismuth magnesium thing, the, the wavelength, whatever, makes it to TTSA, which was in Serpo as well. So that's kind <laughs> of an interesting connection, don't you think? Well, yeah, it doesn't mean they're lying, though. What? I don't know. I mean, it's all... Yeah, but, uh, the so what does it mean? 
So what does it mean? All of these guys doing this UFO circle jerk and sharing these these elements, and now they're all on the same email chain, Linda Moulton Howe, Tom DeLong, Lil Elizondo, Kate Green, you know, fucking Jack Sarfati's in some of these, Ricky Tiki, like the list goes on of just like the biggest scam artists in this discussion that people are taking these stories and these situations like Serpo seriously. <laughs> they think that the end of Close Encounters was based off of real events and the CIA infused that into the film? How stupid, how stupid do you have to be? And that's not to say that the CIA hasn't had their hands in putting messages in films or television. That's been happening for a long time. But come on. Like, come on. The end of Close Encounters shut down an entire national park and like 500 miles around it evacuated everything within sight. It's so stupid. Also, aliens can land on top of Devil's Tower. It's a movie, you guys. It's a movie. It is fiction. These guys. Yeah, the point is, don't yeah, no, it's don't not real. Illusions. Yes, you do. There, there, no doubt there's a bunch of disinformation, you know, what is disinformation, you know, truth wrapped in a bodyguard of lies. But I have, uh, you know, I have no reason, I have no reason to, uh, to doubt there's nothing in the physics that would prevent, I don't know the details of the serpent thing, some of the stuff they're saying, that might be bullshit, I don't know. But I'm just saying the idea of that we have sent, you know, military personnel with the aliens you know, with a certain set of aliens, you know, through a through a wormhole or something. That that makes uh, you know, there's, there's yeah, I, there's nothing crazy about that. Now, whether nothing it's true, crazy you know, about that at all. Thing. Nothing crazy about sending American astronauts through a fucking wormhole, and yeah, you know, and I wonder if they're ever gonna come back. But yeah, nothing crazy about that whatsoever, because the philosophy and the possibility of the physics might be completely there. So go fucking build it, Jack Sarfati. You're such a fucking brilliant guy. Go. Go, bunny. <laughs> What's stopping you? Why aren't you getting that zillionaire funding from anybody? I mean, Brandon Fugel, for fuck's sake. Go to Brandon Fugel. Get you, get you some money and start, you know, making your own goddamn machines or wormholes. Whatever the fuck it is you're saying. Like, what are you saying, Jack Sarfati? You know how UFOs work? You know where they go? You know how they travel? What the occupants, who the occupants are? What, what, what is the claim, man? You're like Ashton Forbes on fucking steroids. <laughs> you are a monster. Just a monster of just crazy deceit and conspiracy bullshit you and ricky ticky jesus christ dude honestly that would be such a funny <sighs> store this because this could be good for something else <laughs> this little duo ricky ticky and jacks are farty um okay, I, I, I seem to recall that that some of it sounded pretty flaky, you know. So it was like second, as, as Rick <laughs> some says, of it. whoever was reporting was second, third hand, didn't know what he's talking about. So that may be. So, <laughs> you know, it's just an open question. But the point, look, I just want to talk about the physics. There's nothing about the basic Serpo type scenario that is not, that, that makes it impossible for it to be real. That's all I'm saying. What are the physics? Okay. Anybody, anybody still there? Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree 100% with Jack. Of course you do. Um, of course you do. What I said, uh, you, he, obviously that person didn't even know where it started. Circle yeah. started from. Yeah. He needs to read some books because it didn't start with me. It started yeah. with a colonel, Air Force colonel out of DIA. He came yeah. forth and talked. He, you know, none of these people realize that this subject's been going on since 2005. There's been four yeah. UFO conventions that discuss the Serpo story. 
Three of them yeah. contained yeah. people from DIA that talked yeah. about it. They didn't talk about yeah. Rick Doty doing all this stuff. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about yeah. what happened within the DIA. No, and those two yeah. personalities, those two personalities are traced to you, and it's in the email chain with you, Victor Martinez, Al Putoff, and Christopher Green. Everyone can oh, I read remember it. Victor Everyone Martinez for themselves. All right, listen, you know what? The emails don't mean shit. Let's not let's not waste any time. <laughs> exactly. Words mean nothing. Exactly. Words mean nothing. Yeah, Actions mean, mean, mean nothing. When you're, just, when you're discussing a thing, right? And like again, you are under the threat of it being released or whatever prematurely. <laughs> you're trying to find out who the person was. You're trying to slander them. Okay, I remember that. The email is there for everyone to read. All right, all right. But you know what? That's not – you take it offline. You, that's a separate issue. Let's stay on. Why yeah, is it a separate exactly, issue? Yeah. Let, you, know, uh, uh, you need to go back and talk to Paul McGovern, uh, jo uh, Joseph Yeager. You are uh, Paul McGovern. Those, those, those people. <laughs> uh, all, right. all right. So absolutely. You need to go I talk to my other know, guy is. who is um, me. Uh, how you, how it's you wild, dude. This is why – this is why I don't enter these conversations estimate like because that's like you might as well go to a, a fucking brick wall and just start slamming your head. And that's what tomorrow will be for me. <laughs> Literally slamming my head into a fucking wall to discuss basic reality with a guy who thinks Santa Claus is real. He thinks Santa Claus is real. That's the equivalent of what he believes. I mean, there's proof of Santa Claus there. How did the presents get there? I didn't put them there. How did the presents get there on the 25th? And there's physical evidence. Santa Claus. It's like, yeah, man. It's, it's... Like doing that for free? <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, okay, so this was something very interesting that uh, Greer said. Uh, <laughs> uh, Stephen Greer. Oh, man, this guy. There was another. Uh, uh, this is from the, um, I think it's their Sean Ryan show. I'm going to go ahead and put up my fair use banner. Fair use. This is transformative work. We are educating the public on the videos we are sharing. This is covered under fair use in a lawable by law. Um, I'm gonna hand him do this. There we go. All right, let's take a listen. Um, maybe, I can't remember if it was one or two of the whistleblowers that spoke about this. They spoke about, or maybe it was you talking about it, but, um, when they got into the craft, the inside of the craft seemed almost infinite. Yep, yep. That was that was one of my. I was representing a whistleblower who is not ready to be unmasked yet. He still doesn't want to be known publicly. But yes, I, because you have a dimensional space shift as well. So an object that looks thirty feet across, you go in, and it was so big you could, if you'd thrown a football, you couldn't have hit the other side of it. There was another... Um... Okay, so now Stephen Greer is into Harry Potter. Apparently the UFOs are the same tents that they use for uh, the Wizard's Cup. And when you go into these tents, they're multi-layered, you know, compounds inside. You could throw... They're so big you could throw a football and not hit the other side of it. Let me guess. It's a hundred yards inside. It's the size of a football field, right? Right around there. Got it. <laughs> like, what the hell are you talking about? What are you talking about, dude? Like, it's such a stupid thing. And Jimmy Reese said the same thing here, too. Uh, yeah, not that I agree with everything uh, with Jeremy says, but he's right on this. Like, the UFO conversation has moved far away from technology and science into the fantasy realm of Harry Potter and Felix the Cat. I don't remember Felix the Cat. <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't really. I'm not a big Felix the Cat fan, to be honest. Uh, haven't watched much of it. But Harry Potter, definitely. Um... Yeah, it's just so silly, man. It's so, 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 so silly. 
Okay, yes, that little moment there brings me to a couple of videos here. The first one is this guy. <laughs> so this is a disgraced veteran and former Trump uh, suckler of the teat, the General Michael Flynn. Uh, <laughs> Who still goes with the General Flynn um, moniker there. Um, let's listen to what Flynn has to say here. It's the first part. And then he goes into all, just typical Flynn shit. So, yeah. We'll, I don't know what shows that this is from. So, I don't have a credit here. Um, but, yeah. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't look like a show I'd much want to promote anyway. This is our problem. Is that we, we have these... This this extraterrestrial government <laughs> that is running our lives in this country. And, you know, when you talk about people like Biden or Obama, even those guys, you know, Obama's benefited. I mean, Obama never had a job in his life and he's a multimillionaire. Give me a break, you know. A <laughs> OK, being the president of the United States for eight years is a job so difficult that it literally ages you by 20 years. So whether you like him or not, to say that he's never had a job in his real life is fucking stupid. Um, but let's go back to the first part. I genuinely believe this is one of these scenarios, and this is why I don't credit people like Sky Fart News, uh, because it's just absolute garbage they take clips like this and they put them out there as if it's news as if michael flynn and i know he's fucking nuts and i know he's really right wing and i know he's kooky and i know he's been arrested for the crimes that he's committed um and sentenced to prison and served time <laughs> But I do not genuinely believe that he is saying that aliens are running our government, that an extraterrestrial presence is here. I think what he's saying is the policies, the actions, the words, the things he disagree with look extraterrestrial. And I think that's the context that is being conveyed here. Uh, but of course, you can rely on the old you know, shitty fart news to give you this as some sort of significant thing. As if anything this guy says should be taken with any seriousness whatsoever, this comment right here is the absolute last thing. Well, maybe not the absolute last thing. <laughs> there might be a few things that come before this, uh, but it's back there. It's far back in the line of the things that you know, Michael Flynn, uh, you know, like you should take seriously. This is our problem is that we, we have these this this extraterrestrial government that is running our lives in this country. And yeah, he's comparing the government to an extraterrestrial like it's unrecognizable to him. I believe that's the context. So. If you're using this video clip as some sort of, ooh, what does he mean by that? Implying that maybe the government is run by aliens. Like, this is shit that people like Alien Girl love. She'll do a fucking two-hour show on this and dissect what this scumbag really means when he says stupid shit like this. It's not that important, and there's no need to read into anything this guy says. Uh, so moving on. Moving on. That's the Michael Flynn, Flynn clip. And then this clip here, which was really funny. This is... I'm a... I'm a Mossan. I'm a Mossan. <laughs> um, talking with uh, Ryan Graves here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And this is another clip. I, I don't know where this clip surfaced from. I saw it on, again, one of those sites that I just don't want to give any fucking credit to because they suck. I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. Um, 
but I thought this was hilarious. Really, really funny. Here we go. And I have to say right off the bat, sorry for the audio. This audio is absolutely trash. Um, let me try to bump it up a little bit for you guys here. Um, yeah, that's as high as it'll go. But basically, this is Jaime Musan sitting in a very echoey room with Ryan Graves talking about the significance and the people working on these Nazca mummies. Uh, and I'm assuming this conversation happened before he, <laughs> Ryan got eyes on these mummies. That's my guess. Um, as you can see, there are no mummies in this conversation. We already covered that one clip uh, that TMZ put out. I'm assuming maybe TMZ probably put this one out too. Um, but that's just a guess. Uh, but yeah, I I wonder. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, let's listen. Okay, so he's saying they've been investigated since I think 2000. 21 if i'm not mistaken uh and that they've been testing their dna uh, and the specialist from the navy that's coming and the specialist from the navy that is coming i i he, i can't remember which navy he it, it, i'm assuming the peruvian navy i don't know i didn't listen to this whole conference because it was just so it was too stupid it was too dumb Right. So, again, no specificity on who this Navy guy is, but the, he he boasts him like he's the next coming of Christ in this discussion. He's head of the scientific department of the Navy. <laughs> he's head of the scientific department of the Navy. He's the top, top, top. He's the top, 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 top. He's the top, top, top scientist over there. Ryan Graves is just sitting there like, uh huh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. T tell me more. Oh, that sounds great, Jaime. Okay. Uh, he investigated. He was also. If you listen closely, you can hear Ryan Graves' dignity slink away. <laughs> if you listen real close, it's paused right now, so you can't hear anything right this second, but I'll play some more. And you can see it almost sounds like a slug, a sea slug. You ever heard a sea slug through uh, a naval submarine? Well, if you haven't, that's what this sounds like. The forensic expert for the Navy for many years now, he's not, but he's above that. Uh, he's, the one. <laughs> he's above everyone. Don't, won't we'll, we'll give us the name. He's just, he's above everyone. He's gonna talk about these creatures that were alive a thousand years ago. <laughs> These uh -huh. were not yeah. from okay. a crash. They are, they live with people and they were buried in a sacred place in Peru. <laughs> and we finally, the DNA is up in the cloud, in the internet. Any scientific organization will be able to investigate. It's all you can do, right? Yes, it's all you can do. And present them <laughs> and it's physical evidence. Whoever that says that is not true, they are right there, prove it, right? It's a good, it, this is a chance to do this. You know what I mean? And it's going to be very powerful. Very powerful. Yeah. Just <laughs> cannot wait to see what it does to my bank account. Because, man, I am going to sell 15 other shows on these mummies. I think this is the retirement. Jaime Musan retirement plan is the mummies. Uh, it doesn't know because I downloaded this. So I don't have the closed caption on this. Sorry, Greg. But, yeah, basically... You know, he's saying that he's got a top, 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 top naval scientist who's looked at the DNA. They put the DNA up in the cloud for everybody, anyone, any scientific team to look at, um, you know, and that's all they can do. That's all. But, you know, this is going to be big. It's going to change the world. And it's not. <laughs> it's not. The universities that have confirmed anything on these mummies have been shown to be not very reliable universities and their work do not. It hasn't been verified. It hasn't been put on a murder board. There's been no papers written about it. Um, so, and I think most scientists look at this and fucking laugh their asses off. I mean, again, like Neil deGrasse Tyson pointed out, if these these humanoid beings that are cast in this clay or whatever it is, they're humanoid. They have, it seems like they have around 10 fingers, 10 toes, two legs, two arms, a head, two eyes, a mouth, and a nose. 
But in the human evolution, this isn't bone, it is cartilage. So it doesn't make any sense for them to be mummified with nose slits. Like, so I think that's why scientists look, take one fuck. it's just like MH370. Take one look at it and you're like, yep, yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, I don't, I don't care what your data says. I, I want to see a paper written about it. I want to see other people debate it. I want to see an intellectual conversation about it that's outside of Ashton Forbes or Jaime Musan or Ryan Graves for that matter. Um, so yeah, just another just embarrassing moment for Ryan Graves. Funny for me, maybe not so funny for him. Um, this is a new Call of Duty gun I want to try out anyway. <laughs> uh, here is a hilarious clip. <laughs> and there are so many reasons to think this is such bullshit. And I'd like to know if in the chat, if anybody uh, wants to take a guess why I think this is bullshit. But I'll play the clip in a second. We also had a poll going. How much money would it take for you to debate UFO Mike? Right now, the winner is a $500 flat fee. I can tell you right now, it's not that. But I am thinking if there is a part due, which I hope there is, uh, I think I'm going to ask for that. So that way there's no, you know, okay, I've had enough after an hour. You're good. I'm good. I think everyone's good here. Um, then second place is $50 an hour, 21% of the pie. Third place is $25 an hour with 11% of the pie. Or excuse me, that's fourth place. Third place is $15 an hour with 14% of the pie here. So there's a clear winner. There's still time to vote. Uh, if I remember, we'll discuss this at the end of the show. Uh, sometimes I forget those. Okay. So this is a new video dropped the other night on Easter last night. Perfect. Mm. Just fucking... Gabagool, like perfect, you know, it's just fucking perfect, you know what I'm saying? Forget about it. Like, this is just like, yeah, of course, we see a triangle above my house on Easter Sunday, the day of the Lord's rising. Oh, Jesus, thank you so much for this. Uh, this is just. If I haven't given away, that's one reason why I think it's bullshit. But let's listen and watch the clip, shall we? I'm going to turn down the audio, and I think you guys will know why here in a second. There's two ones right there. One is fading now, and one's flying over. Check that out. This is Easter Sunday. Listen. Number three there. Okay, so it's it's Chris Bledsoe, and he's getting the orbs on Easter Sunday, y'all. It's amazing. Oh, thank you, orbs. Here's the thing about this clip. I already have to say, like, it's driving me fucking nuts. Did you guys notice what's wrong with this clip? Whatever animal, I'm assuming it's crickets. I've never heard crickets this fucking loud in any video ever in the history of man i know there is a big cicada uh uh formation this year from my understanding so maybe it's cicadas but it doesn't make any sense from an audio visual standpoint that the guy holding the camera is not louder than the fucking cicadas or crickets that are on the floor they should at, le at the very least be level, level, but if you're closer to the mic, that's what the mic should pick up, depending on your setup. But in most cases, that would be what's going on here. Now, I can't tell what this was filmed on. There's no metadata with this, obviously. There's no location. There's no date. There's no time. There's none of that shit. There's just... Oh, this is so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you to the lady. In the shape of a triangle. 
see that one fading now. Now maybe this one will brighten for us, if it be your will. This, oh, is this is stationary now. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Easter Sunday. Beautiful Easter Sunday. <laughs> this could easily be drones. Easily. And we covered this already many times on this show. His garage is littered. Littered with RC drones and planes. Littered with them. That maneuver is not that complicated. Especially these days when you could coordinate these things and program these things into your drone systems. So he's either a magical, you know, summoner human with superpowers that summons triangular, triangular uh, formated, you know, drones or orbs with the will of his heart. Come on, man. It's such bullshit. And I'm not saying crickets can't get that loud. I can't. I'm like, obviously they can. But again, I'd love to see the audiovisual setup. And these are things that, like, if you're genuinely, again, and this is why, if you want to shut somebody like me up, give me a picture of what your rig looks like. What mic you're using. What camera you're using. The metadata on that file. So it gives us the time, the date, the location, all of that good stuff. And therefore, then we could go, okay, now it makes sense why the crickets are louder. Cause he's got a shotgun mic that's pointed out to fucking thousands of crickets in the middle of a swamp. So yeah, that makes sense. But it's also convenient because those loud ass crickets cover, guess what? Drone noise. So it wouldn't be crazy to double layer that cricket noise and bump up the cricket volume so you don't hear the drones the, the drones that they're flying from there <laughs> that they've programmed and that's what i believe is happening genuinely that's what i believe is happening at this point with the with the bledsoes like give me a break give me a break like do it do it at a fucking to go to go to a football game. You guys, I think, are in Indiana. Go to a Pacers game. <laughs> you know, drive up to Chicago, or is it parallel to Illinois? I don't know, man. I'm not very familiar with that part of the states. But just drive to a big, like a Bears game or a Packers game, and summon them there on a Monday night football game. So there's no mistake. You know, bring your beauty and joy then, Chris Bledsoe. Why don't you do that? Instead of giving these, these fucking low quality swamp videos where we can't, where we get no data on any of the information whatsoever. So, you kind of see why I think this is bullshit? Hmm. It makes sense. Makes sense. Okay. Let's talk about this trailer here. Uh, I wanted to play this at the end, only because I know it's going to get flagged. But let's see what happens. So this is... <laughs> oh my gosh. Man, to think that we had Brandon Fugel hanging out on this show, and the Dragon, and all of these guys from this show... And we were able to genuinely discuss this show to their faces and give us our give a give them our honest grades and reactions to these episodes. Man, that to me was some of the best stuff. I genuinely believe that uh, those Skinwalker, and I think we're also gonna start reviewing the Skinwalker episodes again. So when this season fires up, we're gonna review these once a week. So it'll probably be Fridays because um, I think the show's on either Tuesday or 
Monday, even if it's Monday, like it, it wouldn't be in time for me to watch it. So, uh, and review it. So yeah, we're going to review this season and we're going to review it with even a more critical eye than we have before. Uh, and I thought we were really tough on this show. Like we did not hold, there was no holds bar. Like everyone was able to share their opinion and discuss the issues with the science experiments, discuss their issues with the lack of preparation, discuss their issues with the lack of repetition in the experiments, just the lack of science. Like there's no real science being done on this ranch at all. It's just a bunch of fucking rockets and laser beams being shot into the sky and Travis Taylor fucking calling bugs craft that are moves, moving 1500 miles an hour. Like where, 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 where calling things dangling on a fucking spider web orbs. Like it's so stupid. There's no evidence coming out of this ranch whatsoever. Don't believe anything anyone tells you about this ranch, including especially Carl vibe. <laughs> I love Carl. Nice guy. Good. A uh, great fucking dad but he believes this shit hook, line, and sinker, and I'm just not sure if it's because it's a real belief system or he's just part of the production now. He's, he's, he's been on shows. He's getting interest and paid to do these spooky, and, and you'll see at the end of this, this Skinwalker trailer sort of this new genre that History Channel is covering, and these shows and these opportunities for Carl are tickets for future projects down the road. So, uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens, but yeah, let's check out this trailer. Go. We are on the cusp of discovering the secret of Skinwalker Ranch. The world is watching. <laughs> yeah, bet your ass we are. Here we go, more rockets. More drones. Fire. This is unlike any experiment we've done. Here we go. Oh god. invisible force causing Oh god. Okay, here's okay, Jesus. So far it looks like they're doing the drones themselves. They're trying to do a drone swarm themselves. I'm interested to see what expert uh drone company comes out for that episode. Uh, and we start seeing all these drones falling out of the sky. First of all, that can be programmed. And if it's being programmed, second of all, if it's being programmed by Travis Taylor and that crew specifically, then it makes total sense why these fucking things are falling out of the sky. Um, but hey, we got to wait and hold our judgment, right? We're going to wait and hold the judgment to see the real episode, everyone. Let's see what Dragon found while digging underneath the uh, ranch here. Look at that. It's like jelly. I don't know. Ooh. Mystery jelly. <laughs> oh, we're back to wormhole with Steven Taylor. Or Steven, what the fuck is his name? Travis Taylor. Steven Taylor. A lot of Stevens in this UFO discussion. But yeah, there goes Travis Taylor with his wormhole, man. Oh, man, this ain't a wormhole. Let's shoot rockets into a man. Woohoo! Yeah! Let's shoot rockets into a wormhole, y'all. So we can prove its existence with a rocket. The fuck are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? This is not science. It's a fucking TV show. It is a commercial to make Utah a paranormal destination. It's an hour long TV commercial to convince you to come out to Phenomicon and paranormal ranches and blind frog, you know, swamplands and petroglyphs you know come explore utah man and honestly i got no problem with that if that's what you labeled it but you don't you label all of this bullshit that somehow connects to them our teachers our instructors our guides our spiritual visions oh, just all the bullshit you know like it's 
But then again, I guess if you actually told the truth about this stuff, who the fuck would go? Who would go? But honestly, shows like this should come with a warning label, just like cigarettes. What you're about to consume is all pseudoscience. It's not based in reality, and there's no actual scientists on this crew <laughs> or anywhere near this fucking ranch or in these experiments. And no, none of this data will be shared because we own it. Because we're a television show first. We're an entertainment thing first. I don't know. I stopped this trailer enough times to maybe not get copy strike. We'll see. I don't think the public is ready for what you got. I think we are. Uh-oh. Military's flying over the ranch again. If you talk to the locals, that's not a weird thing for that to happen in Utah, especially Utah. Do they know something we don't? What is that? <laughs> the secret of what is that? What is that thing? Oh, man, I don't want to say it's a UFO again, because the last time it was definitely a bug that when we slowed it down and zoomed in 300 times, could see the flapping wings of, so I don't want to say it again, but I'm pretty sure it's alien, y'all. Well, it's alien, y'all. Let go. Ow. Well, alien, y'all. The dude is just a believer, man. Just loves, 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 loves to believe this stuff. By the way, we have over 200 people watching between Twitter and Twitch and YouTube. You guys, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, share the show, ring the bell. That way you're notified anytime we go live. And also, if you really love the show, check out our Patreon. Or, or uh, send me a message, a super chat. Those are always great, too. Or become a YouTube member, which... Man, we are close. I think we're going to do YouTube members are going to get access to old UCR episodes, but we're going to release one a week. And I think we're going to do it in order. Like a genuine episode 0 0.1 all the way to uh, ending the show. Every single episode, every single phone home, everything. So I think we're going to release those once a week. And so that way it gives content for the people who are spending money on the show. And it gives access to the people who really want to see those interviews to the show. And uh, it also, yeah, like, you know, again, like it, all of these shows will come with a warning label. They're all pseudoscience. Uh, but people have been asking me a lot to release those episodes and I've been trepid and sort of hesitant about it. But I honestly think this might be the best solution. If you really want those episodes, become a YouTube member and we'll start releasing one a week and only you guys will have access to it. I mean, but you really, really, really have to want to watch those pseudoscience, not like not good information shows that came from UCR, uh, there were great moments. There's some good good stuff in that archive, and God, there's over 300 episodes. It's a lot. It's a lot, you guys. Um, so, you know, if you want it that bad, yeah, I, pay for it. <laughs> pay for it, you know? Like, um, that's the way I'm going to do it. It's... Uh, I don't, I don't consider it a paywall because it's not hidden in, it's not, it's already information that's been public. If you really want to get it, you can get it without paying for the fucking pay, the paywall. Um, I don't know why I'm getting sidetracked about this because I haven't really even confirmed whether or not I'm doing this, but this is like, I'm close. I'm close. Anyway, I like to just share what I'm thinking. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. Um... Anyway, let's play the rest of this trailer. Walker Ranch, new season premieres Tuesday, April Tuesdays, April 23rd. Yeah, so we will cover it Thursday, Friday, Friday, April 26th, right? 
24th is Wednesday, 25th is Thursday, 26th is Friday. That makes sense. So yeah, Friday the 26th, we'll, we'll cover the first episode of this. And yeah, we'll be we'll be just as tough as we were the first time. We'll give it a score just like we did the last seasons. Um, and yeah, you know, we'll, we'll hold all of these claims to the fire like we always do. And, uh, again, like I'm waiting, I, I don't know how long it takes to officially transfer these things, but I would say you better do it sooner than later. I don't know, man. That's a good question. If there's like, they have to uh, turn over how much all of these participants in phenomena for phenomicon got paid thanks to the work of um expanding frontiers research erica luke's and uh jack brewer uh, and i know there's one other person that i'm forgetting there but that's that's the main gist of that research group and they were able to get all of those amounts through foia and you know the, the they tr they tried to block it but Thankfully, the city said, no, you can't do that. Um, the state said, no, you can't do that. And so now they have to release this information. But I'm curious to know, like, if that information is better to release in the middle of the season? Like, is there a time frame? Like, do they have to release it within the next 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, uh, six months? You know, what, what what's the time frame where that have information has to be turned over to the Expanding Frontiers research uh, guys um, and ladies? Um so yeah anyway that, i i don't know if releasing that information now would be pro i i if i was a production team if i was brandon i'd say all right just just fucking put it out just let's get it out there let's deal with it let's 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 answer all the questions that people have and then you know let's go to the show uh as opposed to releasing that information in the middle of the season and having to deal with that weirdness then i mean i don't know i don't know we'll see we'll see how it works out uh, but I know that information is definitely coming. Part of history, strange and unusual. So strange and unusual is now a segment that history covered. Uh, history Channel is building, I guess, as part of their lineup in their network. And so, like the Blind Frog Ranch, which is all bullshit. I know this because Carl told me it was bullshit. Uh, like he was there. He did it. Like he did investigate. Like he's. He said it's all bullshit like bullshit to the nth degree and now here we are a couple years later and it's like we're kind of being shills for the same bullshit just on a different level um just it just just it's same bullshit different ranch that's it that's it it's okay over here but over here eh, maybe not so much or it might be okay depending you know on how it benefits me Estimate of the situation with a five dollar donation. Thank you so much, Lou. What do you think of Ash's recent Hard Truth podcast, where he and I finally came to an agreement about MH370? Yeah, that was cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, but honestly, I got me a really good chuckle because you got me on April Fool's Day, and I think um, you know what? Let's let's play that because I think it's really good. <laughs> I think it's really good. Uh, this is an April Fool's joke that was <laughs> put out today by SMS Situation. And it says, uh, I went on Ashton Forbes' latest podcast, quote, Hard Truths, to smooth over our differences, as well as finally admit the truth about MH370 videos. We also talk about the UFO history and the UFO Twitter politics. Thanks for having me on. And then, you know, <laughs> hashtags and... <laughs> And includes Ashton the uh, here. Oh, I wish you had added him. That would have been great. Uh, but I'm sure he's seen this. Uh, and then you hit the YouTube link and yeah, we got Rick rolled, baby. Yep. Yeah. Here we go. Hmm. Meow, meow, meow. I mean, hilarious. Yeah, of course that didn't happen. <laughs> Dummy. <laughs> you stupid asshole. Of course that didn't happen. Of course Ashton Forbes didn't have a rational discussion about MH370. Why would... 
come on. I thought I was like, oh my God, really? I clicked it going, wow, I got to hear this. Uh, I got this really awesome cat meme. But man, I was fucking pissed. I was so mad, but so in love with it at the same time. I genuinely, I do not know how it's possible. Yeah, just this is art. This is what it is. It's got, it, it is eliciting both sides of the spectrum when it comes to emotions. Pure joy and absolute hatred. All at the same time. It's a self-licking cat's cat cone. <laughs> um, dude, thank you for the donation. Yeah, this was hilarious. I loved it. It was so damn funny. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Okay, what else do we have bookmarked? I think it is now. No, wait, not that one. I think we could talk. Yeah, we'll leave this here for like our little moment of Zen at the end of the show. When I sign off, I'll play this for you guys uh, with some music and, and we'll pop up some comments. And uh, again, thanks everyone for being here. Dana Shadell, thank you for being a member. Arnon Paranormal, again, thank you for being a wonderful mod. I should probably make Dana Shadell a mod too. Uh, yeah, I should probably do that. You know, women are make great mods. This guy right here, he hates the show, but he loves hate watching the show. Maybe he will be less butthurt about losing UCR now if he can monetize them. <laughs> Buddy, I already monetized them. I made $40,000 off that show. And I walked away from it. Yeah, so, you know. What are you, what are you getting at? <laughs> What are you getting at? I mean, I'm not going to put them out there for free. That's for fucking sure. Because I don't want everybody just um, taking them out of context. That's my biggest worry. And if they're behind a paywall, it's going to be very difficult to take those things out of context. Because if you put it up anywhere, I'll find it. You know, and we'll try to take it down. Um, but, you know, or at least put some sort of, not take it down, but put some warning on there somewhere. Hey, like... This was bad information taken from the guy who made the show. <laughs> um, anyway, and maybe some of those weeks will also, um, depending on what's going on, you know, things get slow, but maybe, maybe uh, every once in a while we will do like the big episodes, the big interviews, maybe we'll do those for free. You know, we'll stream them together. We'll talk about parts of them uh, or as far as a two hour show will allow, you know, I'll basically self critique myself, cr critique, you know, how we did interviews, all that stuff. Um, so yeah, um, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but yeah, anyway, thank you all for being here. So let's talk about, let us talk about the thing that UAP Mike is here for, <laughs> which is really, uh, a, a kind of, I, I mean, to me, not that big a deal. But it was such a random, out of nowhere request. I never thought in a million years that anybody would genuinely be like, dude, I know you don't like this person, but I'll give you a 50. It wasn't even that. Like, it literally, the, 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 the first thing from this request was from Kimball, UFO Inchos. And he's like, hey, I'll pay you 50 bucks an hour to debate UAP Mike. Excuse me? <laughs> Did you say 50 bucks an hour? I mean, if you were gonna throw a number out there that I would actually consider, 50 bucks is a great number to start with. Absolutely, it was great enough for me to go, yeah, I'll do that. I mean, but before I said, yeah, I'll do that, I responded with, hey, it's your money. Like, if this is what you want to spend it on, I'll be there. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I can keep us as civil as you want. If he, he wants to try and keep it on the facts if he can do that, which he can't. Let's be real. He's just incapable. Um... It's your money. <laughs> like, it's it's your money. If he had said, hey, you want to debate UAB Mike and not offered a, 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 a financial incentive, I would have been like, no. I've got no interest in talking to that person. 
is the lowest form of human on UFO Twitter. I don't want to talk to him anymore. He's shown exactly who he is. He's shown exactly who he is many, many times. He's a bully. He's a gaslighter. He's a harasser. He is a, um, you know, he, he uses illogical fallacies all the time. He uses straw man arguments all the time. He tries to attach people's behaviors to other people just based off a, a few interactions but then turns around and have has hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of interactions with the same people that he's connecting you with or two <laughs> as some sort of endorsement of these people that have said awful shit yet he sits he sits there and has again hundreds of hours of interaction with these people compared to a few hours when it comes to me because I don't fucking talk to these guys. I don't care to talk to these guys. They're racist. They're misogynistic. Uh, and I'm throwing all of them into this descriptive here. Um, they are bullies. They are cultists. Um, and they are grifters, a lot of them. And a lot of them are henchmen and, and foot soldiers for this this fall like um effort <laughs> like there, nobody gives a shit about you guys nobody cares uh, nobody really cares about this conversation everybody's just like look when they when they're here let's have the conversation when they actually show themselves if they ever do which as far as we could tell they're not going to because they're not here um it's again like let's see what this conversation has but i have a feeling it's not gonna be good probably for either one of us like this is gonna be just like pulling teeth for me uh because i've had these discussions before i have a feeling they're gonna go very similar to when jack sarfati uh conducts himself uh conducts himself in the interviews um you know he just lies he just lies and says shit with no evidence and no proof and he calls everybody a fucking dummy except for him he's the only guy who who understands what's happening um and yeah uh, <clears throat> the thing that I can never forgive him for is making a meme out of my girlfriend and attacking the job that she has and making that information public and, um, and just affecting her in a way that I hated watching. Because you guys are such fucking bottom barrel scumbags. I've promised to not call names on the show tomorrow. But here I'll tell you how I really feel about this piece of shit. Um, you know, oh, I didn't make those. I didn't do those. No, you just shared and liked them and encouraged them and laughed at them. Um, and some of them you did create and have a hand in. In getting the information and putting that stuff out there a person who has nothing to do with this at all except for just supporting me <laughs> that's it that's it um and they will i promise you mike will use things like um her support um like he will he will imply that that means she pays for everything in my life which is the farthest thing from the truth but even if it was true, let's just say it is. How does that make me wrong on the points that you make? If they're even points at all. But I'm sure we'll get there tomorrow. I'm sure there'll be stupid things like that. Oh, why do you endorse people like Tupacabra? I don't. Never have. Never fucking will. Um, especially after I found out the kind of person Tupacabra is. And same thing goes for Red Panda and the kind of people that Red Panda promotes and hangs around with. I see you guys. You guys are all scumbags, all of you. All of you guys. All of your spaces and all your bullshit, all of you guys are the worst. So when you throw 50 bucks an hour, okay. 
I'll take that. I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of with the audience now. I wish I had said, you know what, let's do a $500 flat. I didn't negotiate at all because I was like 50 bucks an hour, shit. Maybe by the end of this, me and Mike can talk and we can do a 24 hour talk. <laughs> like, like, you want to give me 1200 bucks? I'll take it. Like, I'll take it to talk to just fucking show you how stupid you are all day, all fucking day. I'll, I'll take that money all day. Um, but yeah, I should have done a $500 flat fee. Like with 56% of the audience with the, went with the flat fee. I probably should have come back with that, you know, but I understand like why Kimball offered me this money. I get it 100% because I would have said no. to uh, 25 would have been like, nah, 50 maybe, maybe. And then 50, all right, fuck it, I'll do it for 50. I'll do it for 50, but I, I should have gone with the flat fee. Uh, 500 bucks with a minimum of two hours. Guaranteed two hours, I will stick there, stick it out, and, and try to handle as much bullshit and, and fucking dumb fucking... Oh, God, I cannot wait to what this moron comes up with. Like, the guy who makes fun of my weight. This guy makes fun of my weight. He made fun of my weight in this fucking chat, and he's a fat fuck himself. He is a fat bastard himself. He's got man boobs and two chins. You guys saw the fucking... You guys saw the welcome screen? Look at this guy. I mean, give me a fucking break. Give me a break. You sitting here fucking making fun of fucking overweight people? I would fucking own you in a fight. I would fucking, I would sit on you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, if that's what it took, yeah, I'd do that. Uh, but fuck, I'd love to see you fight you, UFO Shane. He's 6'4". He would crumple you into a fucking piece of origami. Um, I would love to see you try and back up that fucking mouth of yours, Mike. I would fucking love to see that, man. Fuck, I would pay to see that. Fucking pay. You need to get fucking knocked out. You need to get punched in the face. Like, honestly, sometimes people just need to get punched in the fucking face and they stop talking all that bullshit. It's like... Mm, yeah, I've got a very strong dislike for this person because again, they attacked my family essentially and they've attacked other people's families including Jeremy McGowan uh, and even Tubacabra you know, as much as I dislike Tubacabra, the things that were done to him and his family were just fucking gross two wrongs don't make a right like it's um, and that's the only place where I, I had any empathy for him, but that's gone. That shit is over. When you're doing the shit you're doing today, I will never, ever, ever give you scumbags a fucking chance ever again. Like, yeah, like these are the feelings I get when I think about these guys, just not good stuff. Cause they're not good people. Um, and interacting with them, I think just takes a lot of effort. It really, really does. Um, yeah. But for 200 bucks, yeah, fuck it. I'll sit there and listen to his bullshit and make him look like an idiot. And hopefully, you know, people could clip the hell out of it and, and uh, you know, use it against him and, and just point out his tactics primarily, just the, th the things he does. Like he'll accuse people of the exact same shit he does all the time. All the time. And for who? Like, mm, this guy. He also gets fuzzy memories when you ask him direct questions. So I can't wait for those moments, too. Uh, I think. I think I heard that somewhere. Oh, now it's you think. You just said you fucking know. Okay. Um, yeah. It'll be, it'll be very, 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 very interesting. Um, yeah, we covered that. We covered that. We covered that. Okay. Um, and yeah, I guess, you know, that's basically the show you guys <laughs> like, oh man, you seem to like the drama Lou reviews because you're not, uh, letting it go either. Buddy, again, they came to me. They they, they came to me with 50 bucks an hour. I'm like, I'm not seeking this shit. I dropped these dickheads a long time ago. A long time ago. 
long time ago. So, you know, like, what, what am I supposed to do? Who says no to 50 bucks an hour? It's easy money, man. It's easy, easy, easy money. Uh, I got sick of DMs telling me shit and who to follow and block. Yeah, that's what he does to everybody. He, he makes phone calls and leaves voicemails and fucking, you know, him and his wife fucking sit there and talk to you on the phone and they try to tell you, oh, this person's bad, you should block them, or this person's good, you should you should follow them or, or listen to their show or whatever the fuck. This weird fucking thing they do as a couple, it's so, so weird. Um... Let's see. Someone who doesn't need it is who says no to a hundred. LOL. Oh, does that make sense? I don't care how rich I am, dude. If I'm, I'm not rich at all, but, uh, 200 bucks is 200 bucks, man. You know, if it goes four hours, I mean, but even still like, damn dude, if it goes two hours, that's a hundred bucks, man. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Uh, let's see here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, TJ felony. Yeah, too is hella lame. Agreed. Um, let's see here. What's <laughs> Steve Long, LOL. I need way more than 50 to endure that hour. <laughs> 200 maybe. 200 an hour? Shit, that'd be fucking... I tell you, if this, if there is a part two, if there is a part two, I'm definitely going flat rate. There's no, there's no way I do this for 50 again. 50 is the first time, you know, and then, I mean, fuck, dude. Like, what do you... Like, anybody making an argument against this shit is like... Again, like, uh, it's being contradictory because they probably don't mind that Linda Mullen Howe accepts ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars to speak at an event, and we're gonna see, we're gonna get a real good idea of what, like, you know, a um, a Dr. Travis Taylor gets to speak at an event like this, uh, like Phenomicon, and do private fucking lunches, you know, like, let's see how much money that guy makes in a weekend compared to my $50 an hour rate to debate up the lowest scumbag on the fucking UFO Twitter pool. You know, the UFO fucking Twitter mosh pit. Um, it's not even close, man. It's not even close. So, yeah. Um, this is just easy money as far as I'm concerned. And I totally get, again, why Kimball... Like, I understand why people want to listen to this discussion. I understand why people... Uh, don't care about this discussion. I understand why someone would be like, hey, I'll pay you 50 bucks an hour to get this discussion, uh, you know, recorded. Okay. If you want to do that, I've never had anyone offer me a dime in this fucking field. Never once to do something like that. Um, never once. Every single dime I made was a donation, you know, or, or Patreon membership or YouTube membership or a super chat. Um, you know, and it was... Yeah, like it, like nobody's putting a gun to your fucking head to do those things. <laughs> there's, you know, and there's no promise of anything if you do those things, other than your question will be read and your, you know, it, maybe it'll pop up on the screen. That's the only guarantee you get, um, and that your answer, you know, question gets answered as best it can. Uh, but you know, is what it is, you guys. Uh, let's see here. I'll be shocked if the debate is productive enough to even reach one hour. Uh, that's coming from Kimball. I, we'll see. Let's see what uh, let's see what UAP Mike brings to the table. Um, you know, and I haven't listened to all your messages here, uh, Kimball. Uh, but as soon as the show is over, I'll listen to the rest of them. But yeah, I, you know. Let's see what facts he brings to the table. I'll be more than happy to debate any of them. Uh, cause yeah, I think, I mean, if you're relying on people like UAP Mike to be the, the standard for truth, you're in a fucking rough place, man. 
you're in a rough, rough, rough place. Uh, UAP mic is... Mm. Mm. Oh, 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 yeah, bad. It's just bad. Anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is 1 o'clock. Tomorrow, 1 o'clock on Twitter. Is that right? If I believe that's uh, the, the time for that, go ahead and... Put on some tunes here as we head out for the day. You guys, um, we have the show on Spotify and SoundCloud, so go check out the show there. Just look up Blue Reviews. You should find it. Uh, leave us a rate and review. It goes a long way. And, of course, if you haven't already, if, you've, if, if you hate the show and you've watched this long, thank you. <laughs> uh, if you love the show and you've watched this long and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Share the show. That's my favorite one. If you share the show, you got a fan for life here. Um, that's just a great way to get the show out, tell people about the show. Um, you know, the same sort of buzz that UCR was getting when we hit around 1,000 subs, you know, and started doing the Big Phone Home and all that stuff. It's the same sort of vibes and stuff that's happening now. You know, people are discovering the show. They're finding the show, which people like UAP Mike fucking hate and I love so keep it coming keep on keeping on everybody um see you tomorrow on Twitter and we'll be back on Friday I'm not sure what we'll be talking about yet but uh yeah I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week um and I hope I hope tomorrow's productive we'll see we'll see uh, thank you again for coming on this journey, helping us raise the bar. I truly appreciate it, you guys. Uh, until Friday, we'll see you. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Here it is. Your moment of Sarfati Zen. Stupid people in charge with a lot of power. Disclosure is a bunch of bullshit. Did I do any drugs? But I had a pretty good time. So somebody said there's something on Twitter. No way. Are you there, Jack? Can you hear us? I'm gonna shut the goddamn on. I'm not fucking around. Bullshitting, waving our hands. You know. Fucking around, bullshitting, waving our hands, you know, we're not like airy fairy, you know. That's all bullshit. Pretty stupid. Bullshit is all. You're gonna get into the goddamn airplane and the guy can't fly the fucking airplane? What? Like well, they're true. making you stupid. We have a senile president who can't even think he's not in charge. You know, God knows who's controlling him. Quantum waves. But they had Colonel Alexander and a bunch of schmucks who don't know anything. You know, the, the blind leading the blind. So the whole thing is so stupid. You got a bunch of stupid people in charge with a lot of power. Disclosure. Thank you, a bunch Stephen. Of bullshit. Did I do any drugs? But I had a pretty good time. So somebody said, there's something on Twitter. If you don't realize that you're an idiot when you're young, then you're still an idiot. Almost everybody's a schmuck in some ways. Glad you brought this up. Like they're going <laughs> so fucking fast. So the point is, and then you have the schmuck, Avi Loeb. <laughs> it's alien. It's bullshit. He might go out and buy a fucking camera for $10,000. Get the money. We build the fucking stuff. No, the contractors are all stupid. You understand? They're dumb. <laughs> I've met well, a bunch of they're idiots. Dumb. And these, these schmucks, they're all a bunch of schmucks. They don't know <laughs> shit. Yeah, they're all schmucks. They're all schmucks. But the thing Thing is this can unschmuckify them they have to go <laughs> <laughs> they have to go to a sarfati training they have to reverse engineer their stupid minds so, yeah. so they need they need a de-schmuckification school right they need by, a by, de-schmuckification by school they have to okay. listen to, to professor sarfati the drones that program for schmucks how to not be a schmuck once you realize you're a schmuck i'm the guy in the fucking engine okay that's what maybe people just getting stupider because you know it's schmuck yeah. entropy you got it the ci schmuck you're not going to call them a schmuck yeah now, though, they're, they're two schmucks the schmucks are making a pretty good no, point they're though, not. aren't they? I they're mean, not. Listen, about... don't tell me my business. You don't know shit. I know about his <laughs> okay, theory. All right. I know about okay, his okay. theory. So just shut up and I'll tell you, okay? First of all, he's a spook.
true about that stupid gay, the white privilege, all that bullshit. So Eric and I agree on all this shit. He sees it. He sees what I see. Bullshit. And and he pisses me off. I think I pissed him off too because I. Wait. He's an asshole. He's an idiot savant. He's like uh, bullshit. And if you don't have the mathematical language, you don't have shit. You don't have anything. You need the goddamn paper. It's called entanglement signaling of all that shit. Let me ask you this: Is this going to be recorded? Hear this stuff later? A schmuck might be worth a million words. Like people, people have a yeah. ton. A schmuck showdown. People, yeah, as so we do schmuck. Major show. Yeah, we should do. I jump to a fucking duel. And but the point is, the twelve-step program. How to realize you're a schmuck? Don't be stupid. Be a smarty. Come and join Sarfati's party. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your week. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Arden. You're the best. Simon Fly. UFO intros. Thank you for having me tomorrow. And thanks for being here. Wise Monkey. Science, uh, Michael Huntington. Screen name. Yeah, we'll see you, I'm sure, tomorrow. Steve Long. Thanks for being here, brother. Thanks for the donation. Lord Bass. Thank you for being here. Archangel Reese. Thank you. Barb Reed. Love you. Let's see here. TJ Felony, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for all the love. Dana Shadell, one of my favorites. Thank you for being a member. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Lou, convince me. Mike, trust me, bro. Lou, I'm not convinced. <laughs> yes, basically. Thanks for being here. Interested, thank you for being here. Fifi Barbora, thank you, my love, for being here. Greg O'Brien, what's shaking? Thanks for being here. Thank you all. Have a great week.